Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good to have you more or less back from the coffee break. Good, let's start. My name is Roland Wagner. I'm working in, at BNR in the department which is called Automation Academy. So my colleagues and me, we are responsible for the whole content of training and education as well for our internal employees and also for our customers. I prepared for you a short agenda that you get an idea what I will talk about within the next couple of minutes. I will start with BNR company that you get an idea who is BNR, what are we doing, followed by our requirements for education and documentation, then it follows, it's followed by workflow for recording and localization, and last but not least, the conclusion. BNR was found in 1979 by Mr. Bernecker and Mr. Reiner. It's an Austrian company, and the both founders focused on the field of automation. So we are developing and producing hardware as well as software. So the software is used to program afterwards machines and to do also engineering. Our customers are so-called OEMs, Original Equipment Manufacturer. What does it mean? It means we sell our hardware to machine builders. A machine builder prepares a machine for filling, for example. He puts our hardware into a switching cabinet, and with the hardware, he is driving the machine, controlling, and also visual, and he also visualizes the process, what is going on, and he can start and stop the machine via a visualization, for example. Then finally, he takes the machine and sells it to an end customer, and then if you drink the next time a Coca-Cola or a Fanta, maybe you remember me because Coca-Cola is an end customer of us. We are not only in the field of food and beverage, we fulfill the requirements for the whole automation. So we also use our products, or our products are also used in woodworking, in printing industries, in packaging industries, also in the field of building automation, and last but not least, you can also use our products, for example, for wind turbines. We are acting worldwide, so we have 168 offices in 68 countries, and all in all, we are more or less 2,400 employees worldwide. The headquarters is in Austria, and Austria is also the only um, location where we produce our hardware, and that's the reason why everything is made in Austria. I already told you that we are doing software solutions also, which you, will, which you need for the hardware, for programming, and I would like to give you an idea which tools we use and what is specific for these tools. So we do not focus on the SAP part. We do more or less everything, but we do not work with SAP in this field. So we have own created software. So this software is developed by BNR internally. It's called Automation Studio. We also use software from third parties, which we use for uh, the engineering during um, for the engineering of the machine, which is, for example, MATLAB Simulink, or also ServoSoft is used by BNR. What is the link between this software, between these programs? The content is quite technical, it's very technical. Then the functionality is very complex, because each software has a lot of funct functionality within um, the program. Also important and interesting are different user groups. I already explained to you that we are acting worldwide. So it means we have operators which are sitting somewhere in the east, 
So in China, wherever, also in the West, in the US, in Scandinavia, in the northern part of Europe, or in South Africa. We already heard today that it's also a big difference in the way how somebody learns pending on his, ed on his edge. So it means um, we also have to focus on all ages, starting from people which just finished their studies, and also people are using the software which are already working over 30, 40 years for the company, and they also use the software. Good. Um, in the past, we went the way that we were using so-called training manuals. So this should help the operator to get an idea how the software is working. So you can imagine that there is a lot of uh, written stuff in there, and you can also find a lot of pictures in there. So a lot of screenshots to get an idea where to click and what happens if I click or if I take the wrong button. Good, uh, software has the problem that it's changing. So at least each year you get a new software version and then you have to do all the work again. In our case, we had to do the screenshots for all the software again, 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 and again. Then it's also the next part, the language, because the software is available in German language as well as in English language, and further on also in some other languages like French. So this brought us somewhere where we said, okay, with our training manuals and the screenshots, we are not able anymore to work in an efficient way. So we were looking for some software tools which supports us. First of all, we had to figure out what are our requirements. So for us, it was very clear. It has to be something which is going in the direction of, let's call it, a video. So we need to do recordings, recordings of the software which we are using. The next point is to adjust the content. So we should be able to influence the content which is in the software. It should be also flexible, which means the content which we created should be arranged in a way how we like or how we think that it's the best for our users. And a very, very, very important point for us, the localization. So that we have an easy workflow to get our German content to a language, South Korean, Chinese, English, whatever is needed. Yeah, we should not forget about the administration. The administration is also very important. If you have a lot of different content with different languages, it's also a must to have a good administration of this content. And we should not forget about the operator, so the content should be easy to use for the operator. What could be now the solution? The first for us was, okay, it's clear, for sure, it's a video. We take something, take a video, and that's it. Good, by starting with this, we very soon, or very early, got the first problems. Because in this section, you do not fulfill our requirements, what we have in our field. Also, with the localization, it's not so easy to translate the content which is in these recordings. So we were looking for some other tools. And finally, for us, the solution is, that's why we are here, the TT Knowledge Force. So for us, this fulfills to 100% our requirements. Good, I would like to give you an idea how the workflow within our company is to get um, a recording. So from the beginning phase to the end phase. We have three phases. We are starting with the preparation, we go on with the recording, and finally we have then the release of the material and in before the translation. During the preparation part, 
we have to be careful because we have to answer some questions before we can really start with the recording. It's important to know what are our expectations. Who is our target group? Is it a service engineer? Is it maybe a high um, graduated um, IT engineer? Then the next part is what is the content? So which content do we want to show to our group? When this is done, we start with the next part, which we also count to preparation. We do a storyboard. So we were also forced by uh, TTS that we prepare in a good way to know already in before what we want to record finally. For sure, we didn't listen to TTS, so we started by ourselves. We did recordings, and finally, the work afterwards was so heavy that we believe to TTS and started to do so-called storyboards. So we are doing uh, nothing else than taking pictures, screenshots of the process which we want to record to have an idea to know which, part, which buttons are pressed in which way and what is the result. And finally, we have to take the decision which templates are we using. So are there already available templates enough for us? Can we reuse them or do we have to adjust them? Yeah, this was then the part which takes more or less this amount of work. And then let's get to the easier part, which we already saw in the live demonstration. This is the recording part. So we start the software, we start the recording, we edit the content as we need. And finally, um, here it's called create courses, create lessons. So we put together recordings which have the same uh, content to one group that the operator knows, okay, what is the topic, what is the content of this group. Yeah, the last steps are the localization. For us, also important to have some versioning behind to know what is up to date, what was changed from the last recording to the latest recording, and last but not least, we release our material. As we are here quite an international audience, I would like to have a closer look to the localization part to get an idea how easy this could be. We have the knowledge force with our German recordings. We export the content. So export means we get a XLIF file which we forward to our translation department, they run or they do then the translation with the translation memory. In our case, it's called Stratos, the software. Then we get back the translated table and we import it again to the knowledge force and that's it. So it's very easy. Um, we also talked to our translation department and they also said, okay, if we can work in this way, they also appreciate for sure this solution as it is very easy to handle. Here I prepared for you three examples how we are using the recordings within BNR. We can separate between three sections or three groups. The first one is the presentation. Presentation means for us that we are using the recordings for presentation to present how the software, how the programs are working, as well as showing new features of our software. So as we get new versions, we have new features and new functionality, and this we can then show to our customers without using some buggy software which is not tested 100%, which is crashing down five times within one minute. Um, this we can prevent by using the knowledge force. The second part is the hands-on. So this is the interactive work which we give to our customers and to our employees. So after a seminar, they can take or they get the recordings 
to have a closer look on it at home to remember what they did. Because we heard, or I think also everybody knows, if you hear something and you do not touch this software, in this case, for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, you will not remember how it was working. And here you have a very good access to this topic. Last but not least, we have the section for viewing content. So we use very short sequences for our help explorer. So with our software, we're delivering an online help system. And within the online help system, in the past, we only had a lot of content, a lot of written stuff, and a lot of screenshots. But now, we deliver the online help in an interactive way that the people have the direct access to the content. Good. I would like to show you here first this one. I'm not sure if you can read this. I can't read it, to be honest. This is from our South Korean office. So this is a translated recording. And it was translated in a way like I've explained to you just in before. I will change here the presentation mode. I hope that it's this one. Oh, I guess it's this one. And then you can see how the software is working. So this is our own um, developed software, which is called Automation Studio. And here, in this case, we are preparing hardware. So we're inserting um, the hardware for the machine. Yeah, if you could read the language for sure, you can see that you have to do now a right click and to say then insert via left click and to choose the corresponding hardware for the machine. Via drag, uh, scroll down and choose then finally the hardware. Yeah, it's quite nice for presenting. So I really like to do this during my seminars because then I make 100% sure that I stay on my red line, so on the content, on the topic which I want to present. Because if I don't have um, these recordings, it's quite dangerous to lose the line. So that somebody's asking something and you s press another button and another button and another button and finally, you were showing 20 minutes something which does not fit to the content. And here I can say, OK, we have to do this, and we go straight with this topic. And for sure, if you use a very new version, uh, this does not crash like other software. So what means hands-on? This is now a language which you will also not understand, but at least me and some others in the audience, because it's German. And here we did it in a very interactive way. So you go around in these recordings, and there are a lot of hotspots in there and links within, record within recordings. So you even do not recognize that you're still in the recording. What does it mean? Let's see. I do here. Um, I take this part. So this is now a third-party software. And this third-party software is used to um, calculate the, the drive chain. So with this software, you choose the right motor, the right gearbox for your mechanics for your machine. So here we go. On. And you can see the uh, software looks different to the one which I was using it before. And now I'm working in an interactive in an interactive way. Oh okay. The keyboard is different to mine. I'm sorry. So maybe I will go here to the presentation mode again. 
before I look for the um, for the right letters. So we can see now here that this is first of all different to SAP, different to Office, different to Automation Studio, and even here it's working in the same way like with the other software. Good, and the last example should give you an idea how we use this within our Help Explorer. So this was done by our colleagues from the US. They prepared a new software and they show with this recording how this is used in the right way. And also here we are connected via a, a VNC to our target, which is one, yeah, the next step. And yeah, it's also working in this case in a really good way. And we have here now the big benefit again for the localization, for translation, all the text which we have in here are easily exported with an XLIP file and we can translate it to our other languages which are needed. Yeah, that's basically how we are working, how we are acting within VNR. I would like to give you a short um, idea or yeah, an idea how we go on with knowledge with the TT knowledge force and with TTS. So the next steps what we are actually doing is to evaluate the knowledge force for using directly for presentations instead of PowerPoints. Maybe you say PowerPoint, everybody knows how PowerPoint is working. It's so easy and you have a lot of uh, funny um, actions what you can do that something is flying in, flying out and so on. That's on one hand true, but on the other hand you have problems with the localization. I don't know if you got already in this problem, but we often had the problem if we translated our content from German to English or other languages that it was not working. It was not working in the way of that the translator deleted some actions so the text was not flashing in, flashing out, or we had problems with the layout that this was shifted to somewhere. Also in before when we prepared this presentation in the morning we could see with a different language on the notebook, on the office, the layout looks different. Good, and as we have now more and more and more content, we want or we have to organize, to administrate this in a good way, which means we're looking now for an LMS, for a learning management system to provide for our employees and also for our customers the content in a good way that they have a big benefit or that they can use it in a good way. Yeah, the conclusion is that we have with the knowledge force a defined workflow, an easy workflow. We have the benefit of the reusability, so if we go for a new version, we can use the nice feature of the re-recording, which we have seen in before. Then the different player modes I've shown to you just before, so that you can work directly interactive on the recording, or you just use it for presentation, and last but not least, there would be the film modus where um, the whole content, where the recording is just like a film shown. And the easy integration to web-based solutions is also important for us because then you are very flexible and you don't need any other, or not a lot of other um, software products to share your knowledge or to share the content with other guys. 
So for the moment, we have a platform or we have a web link where our employees can log on and do the recordings. But now as it becomes bigger and bigger, we have to change to a learn management system. Yeah, last but not least, from our point of view, it's very important to do the education in this way, in a visual way, because about 65% of content which gets to the brain, more or less, is transferred on the visual way. And the interactive part makes it much more interesting than just reading books, for example. Good. Are there any questions from your side? If there would be questions, you can also ask me later on. Otherwise, I would like to say thank you and wish you a nice afternoon. Thank you.